RC Geek. Welcome back. As mentioned in my E-Flight P47 Razorback and Cessna 150 reviews, I wanted to provide a separate discussion on Horizon Hobby's uh, Safe Select technology that's featured with their bind and fly aircraft. The P47 and Cessna are both great next step type airplanes for those that may still be learning. And so the Safe technology is there to help you in learning to fly uh, the airplane and protect you from getting into trouble. I found that there wasn't a whole lot of documentation about Safe Select out there, so I thought it would be worthwhile to talk a little bit about it uh, and give you guys some tips for using it effectively. Uh, in the process too, I talked with Horizon Hobby to get the full lowdown of what SAFE is all about. Again, this is a technology that's part of their Spectrum bind and fly setups. Uh, so if you're using your own receiver and radio in the Horizon airplanes, then obviously this wouldn't apply. Uh, so with all that said, let's go! Okay, so first of all, what is SAFE? What is it all about? Basically, it's a feature that you can turn on uh, that when flying your airplane is intended to keep you from getting the airplane into an attitude uh, that could potentially get you into trouble. Now, there are multiple levels of safe here. Uh, there's safe select, which is what is in the bind and fly P47 and Cessna, uh, which will basically pitch and roll them at the airplane to keep you from getting it on its back, uh, but maintains a good level of controllability. It's intended to assist intermediate flyers so it won't auto coordinate the airplane in a turn per se like some of the other versions. Uh, that's where the SAFE and SAFE Plus technologies come in, which are intended more for those who are learning. These have beginner modes, which auto coordinate the turns, uh, intermediate, which is similar to SAFE Select, and then advanced, which basically kind of turns it all off. Now SAFE Plus simply means the same as SAFE, but it has the addition of GPS functionality. In all cases, when SAFE is on, uh, there's a pitch command that is tied to the throttle position. So when flying and you have the throttle command in the lower one-third range, uh, a slight descent is commanded. A middle one-third will keep you straight and level, and then the top one-third will command a, a slight climb. Now, as we get into this, I want to say up front, SAFE is a fantastic tool which really makes getting into RC more accessible for sure. But it should not be viewed as a replacement uh, for some good old-fashioned flight training. Since SAFE pitch and roll limits the airplane, uh, and with some versions auto coordinates turns for you, uh, in many cases you will not get the same feel of the airplane as you would when flying without SAFE. Uh, the key in flying well is providing minimal inputs uh, to the control sticks, and that comes with practice. You will fly the way you train, so it's important early on uh, to develop good habits because you're building muscle memory and feel here. To give you an idea with safe beginner mode on, most of the time you end up moving the stick the full limit of stick travel to get the airplane uh, to do what you want it to do, which is not really something you want to get used to. For typical flying, it's about small movements and you rarely want to command full stick throw unless you're looking for some high rate aerobatics. Safe select is much better in that depending on your max control surface throws, you're less likely to hit the limits on the stick travel and so have a more accurate feel to the aircraft. So if you're wanting to get into RC, a SAFE will get you going quickly and safely, but I do recommend also finding a local club and getting some flight instruction in addition, as most clubs always have trainers and instructors available. And then use the SAFE technology to help supplement the training that you're getting. It's a fantastic tool that should be used when you need it, but the hope is to try to avoid relying on it to teach you to fly. Otherwise, you will have to retrain yourself when you're flying without it. Okay, so let's talk about how to set it up. Now, my primary experience here is with the Bind and Fly P47 Razorback and the Cessna 150 both with safe select, so I will focus on how those particular airplanes are set up. Much of this translates to the other versions of safe too, but definitely check your instructions uh, for your specific airplane. Also, don't be afraid to talk with Horizon Hobby customer support too if you have questions about it. They are always willing to help. So if you want safe select on, start the bind procedure as you normally would, uh, but prior to selecting bind on the transmitter, remove the bind plug from the receiver. That activates safe select and it'll, it will be available to use every time you power on the airplane. 
Once powered on, the airplane will then give an indication of the mode it's in during initialization by cycling the surfaces either once for safe select off or twice for safe select on. To use safe select, I highly recommend assigning it to a switch uh, so that you can turn it on and off as desired. To do that, you can simply move the desired switch you want it assigned to five times right after the aircraft establishes link during the bind process, or you can assign it any other time by cornering both sticks inwards to each other uh, and then flipping the desired switch five times. When you use the method where you corner the sticks, you must have your dual rate switches selected such that you are at 100% endpoint travel for those channels. Uh, otherwise, it won't work. Right, now finally, Safe Select, or AS3X for that matter, uh, won't be fully activated until the throttle has been brought above 25%. So you won't be able to check that it all works right unless you've done that. Now here's the thing. The whole goal of using SAFE is to not use SAFE. Wait, what? What I mean is that it's intended as an aid to help you become a more proficient and comfortable solo pilot. Use it as you need it, but try to avoid relying on the technology to teach you how to fly. That's where you run the risk of essentially having to retrain yourself when you begin flying without SAFE. Using SAFE in conjunction with some traditional flight training is quite valuable since you can use it to supplement what you're learning. Uh, also, with SAFE Select, it will help keep you from getting into trouble uh, when you're maidening a new airplane, and that's huge, uh, especially if it's something you're not overly comfortable doing yet. So that's a pretty awesome feature. You can enable safe select during the most critical phases of flight to keep the airplane protected, or if you get into trouble, it, it will write the airplane for you, assuming you have enough time to, to turn it back on and recover. Now, as mentioned, I highly recommend assigning safe uh, to a channel other than your flight controls, including landing gear or flaps. Now the reason is that you don't want to be tied to having safe on at any given moment. Uh, that's where having a seven or more channel radio is helpful. That said, if you only have a six channel radio, then a good compromise would be to assign safe to the same switch uh, as your landing gear, uh, such that with the gear down, uh, safe is active and gear up, it's inactive. This way, when flying around and you want to use it, Simply just put your gear down, uh, and then if you don't want to use it, put the gear back up. You will be locked into having safe on for takeoffs and landings, which isn't necessarily a big deal since you don't need large stick movements uh, in those phases of flight typically, and that's usually when you want the most protection anyhow, being that these are the most critical phases of flight. One thing to note that I found with safe select, uh, that the pitch and roll angle limits are actually a function of the amount of throw you have programmed. Uh, what I mean is that, the higher rates you have selected, uh, the higher angles that SAFE will limit you to. So flying with higher rates while having SAFE on will help maintain the feel of the airplane around center. So know this and use it to your advantage to maintain the feel of the airplane. The goal would be to have a similar feeling airplane between SAFE on and off. Obviously it'll never be the same, especially at the more extreme deflections, uh, but it can be close with the right rates between the two modes. Uh, which is to your benefit. Ultimately, SAFE is there to protect your investment for you, uh, especially if you're new or still learning. Uh, but don't be afraid to challenge yourself because that's how imp we improve our flying. As you fly, try to present the airplane and center all your maneuvers on yourself and, and try to avoid letting the airplane get out too far from you. Remember, you're flying the airplane. The airplane is not flying you. So put the airplane where you want it to go. And no matter what happens, Never stop flying the airplane. That's key if you get into trouble. Of course, accidents do happen, but I'll tell you what my dad told me after my first crash. If you ain't crashed, then you ain't flown. I tell you what, man, the hobby has really come a long way since I was learning to fly. This kind of technology didn't exist at all. You know, buddy boxing wasn't even available when I started. SAFE is a great tool to have and will help protect you in the air. But my challenge to you is to only use it when you need to. Supplement it during those critical phases of flight if you need, uh, and then challenge yourself to fly around without it and try different maneuvers. You can always turn it back on if you get into trouble. And if you're wanting to learn how to fly, this is a fantastic tool, but you can't replace good old-fashioned flight instruction. So I encourage you to connect with a local club 
and get some one-on-one -on -one training in addition. It's the best thing you can do to learn and it supports the clubs. If we don't support the local clubs, then we won't have them and that impacts where we can fly in a big way. All right guys, so that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this discussion helpful. You know, if you'd like to see my review of the E-Flight P47, you can see that here. Or if you'd like to see the review on the Cessna, you can see that here. Thanks again guys for watching and until next time, I'll see you at the field.